Will I get two-headed babies? Here are five tips to strategic and safe line breeding. What are some of the worst things you've heard about line breeding? Is it babies that end up being not fully developed? Uh, poor genetics, poor growth rates? All kinds of rumors are out there for what line breeding does or inbreeding does to a herd. The reality is the top breeders use line breeding to be able to create outstanding animals that produce consistent results. To start off with, what's the definition of line breeding? It's breeding of two close or it's breeding of closely related rabbits with the goal, goal to increase the traits of an important ancestor. What you're trying to do is you're trying to say, I really like the the traits that this uh, ancestor pr produces or has, and I want to have more of that within my herd. Then by intensifying those genetics, you have a higher likelihood of producing more in the future. The three main points from this presentation. First off, line breeding is safe to do. Second, your influ you, this increases the influence of one ancestor within the gene pool so that your future generations within your herd produce outstanding winners. Third, the best breeders in the country use line breeding. When, you, when you're looking at making the next generation or you're making your breeding program in total, what's your goal? Is it producing a healthy litter of a rare color? Selling breeding stock to someone else that produces winners? Is it winning a best in show at a convention or a best of breed at the national level or at the state level or even at a county fair? Depending on whatever your goals are, um, you, need, you need to have the ingredients to make success. To be able to have those goals, first off, you need to set goals for your breeding program. You need to have the genetics in place to be able to reach those goals. And then you ultimately have to breed and produce litters to be able to advance to generations so you can reach those goals. The combination of the three together is what made success. Here's examples of the breeding schemes that are available within, uh, within breeding rabbits or livestock in general. On the left hand side, we have inbreeding which is the most intensity of similar genetics. The second category is line breeding. Third is more of a mild line breeding. And lastly, outcrossing, which is breeding of two completely unrelated rabbits together. <coughs> as you're doing this, or as you go from outcrossing towards the left to inbreeding, you're intensifying the genetics of the gene pools, so you're more likely to get those same types of traits to show through. When you're looking at what that actually means, um, so outcrossing is the two breeding two unrelated rabbits together. The next step is breeding distant cousins, and line breeding, which is the focus of this presentation, is breeding or having a, on a pedigree having the sire, grandsire, and great grandsire all the same rabbit, or the same great grand dam the same, or having the great grand dam and great grand sire siblings, um, breeding those or having those on the same pedigree uh, to pull those traits forward. And then taking line breeding one step further to end up inbreeding is when you breed the dam to son, sire to daughter, or brother and sister. In all of these breeding schemes, they are all actually safe. All that, ha or what most people misunderstand is that the breeding scheme that is used doesn't produce those bad characteristics of a, a loss of a litter or lack of growth size. It's the gene pool itself that the rabbit possesses that leads to that. As an example of this, in animals used in scientific research, they are bred together for over 20 generations of inbreeding, 20 generations of inbreeding, of breeding um, brother to sister or sire to daughter or dam to son for 20 generations before it's considered genetically pure enough for the genetics of the rabbit itself not to cause an error in the experiment. 
so that at a minimum for research, mm -hmm. having uh, research facilities want to have rabbits that are over 20 generations inbred before they can say that the genetics themselves are not impacting the results of the study. So oftentimes those that have even further inbreeding than just 20 generations. The reason why that's important is that, um, yes, when you inbreed, you may end up seeing something like that, as a, or you may see uh, birth deformity or something like that, but that's just expressing the genes of the line, it's of those animals itself for the line itself, which come quicker by doing one of these schemes. So let's see what line breeding and outcrossing actually look like in a pedigree. Here's an example of a generic pedigree. Is, in this example, the animals in orange are the same rabbit. Is this an example of line breeding or outcrossing? Line breeding's correct. The dam and the great grand dam are the same rabbit. You would use it, or a breeder would use this, if they really like the traits of the dam or great grand dam and want to pull those forward in the next generation. What example is this of? Line breeding or outcrossing? Line breeding again. Both of the grandsires are the same on this pedigree, being that that rabbit was an outstanding individual that the breeder wanted to use. Next, which is, what is this example of? Outcrossing, you're correct. None of the rabbits on the pedigree are the same. Here's an example of, or what does this show an example of? Line breeding or outcrossing? The animals that are in orange are similar rabbit on the pedigree, or the same rabbit on the pedigree. You're right. This would be an example of line breeding. This would be the same grandsire, or the grandsire, the great grandsire appear, and the great grandsire appears three times on this pedigree. A breeder that uses, or has a pedigree like this, is, is using that sire extensively because they want to pull those traits forward from that outstanding grandsire, or from that outstanding individual in orange. Imagine your favorite cookie. What's in it? Well, we have, what are the ingredients that we need to make a, your favorite cookie? We need flour, eggs, M&Ms, butter. We need to know the time that it needs to take in order to go from uh, mixing to putting it on the tray to baking it properly. All those ingredients go in to what makes your favorite cookie. Now imagine, if you will, you have your favorite cookie right now, and you're eating it. Tastes pretty good, right? Now what if I let you choose? I let you choose between your favorite cookie that you've had of all time, or a mystery cookie. Which one would you want? Now let's relate that to rabbits. The one on the left, is known genetics. You know what it's gonna produce, you know what that, that feeling's gonna be like once you actually consume the cookie, or the one on the right is a mystery. It looks tempting, it sounds tempting, but you have no idea what it's actually like. That's literally <clears throat> what line breeding versus outcrossing is. With line breeding, you know what ingredients go in to making it a success. With outcross, you may get be successful, but you don't really know. And with this example, that cookie that sounded really good as a, as a mystery, turned out to be a burnt cookie.
Let's use line breeding in this breeding program. In this herd of Minirex, this is a picture of a pedigree of, of rabbits that, uh, of, of this particular rabbit's ancestors. If we wanted to improve the hindquarters of this broken buck Minirex, which one of the does in the pedigree would you want to use to bring forward as better traits? You would likely want to use the the white dam um, from the sire side, the, or so the great the grand dam from the sire side. She has an outstanding hindquarter. By breeding her to that to the grandson, you would expect to see outstanding qualities. Whereas if we went to his dam, you can see that she has more of a hollow loin or weaker hindquarter. And she also is from the line of or line of rabbits that have more pinched hindquarters, both on the uh, on the great the grand dam and the great grand dams on both sides have really poor hindquarters. Line breed, how to use line breeding within your breeding program? First, you need to have the genetics. Find a breeder with really good rabbits, and then when you meet that person buy multiple rabbits from them and find ones with similar ancestors. Breed them together, keep the good traits from the litters, and then continue breeding your line. That's the way to strategically make a herd that will produce consistently and produce quality over a long period of time. To close this presentation, the things to remember, line breeding is safe to do, it increases the influence of an ancestor, and it's the best or the best breeders in the country use line breeding.